Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another AI video. In this one, we're in CG Dream, and this is a fantastic AI art and AI image generator. In this video, I am going to show you how to combine text to image, image to image, and the new, I've never seen this before, 3D object to image functionality that's built into CG Dream to create the exact style, structure, composition, look that you're going for in your images all of that while combined with their very cool and very unique filter system now i know you've seen filters in other apps this filter system is nothing like that there's over 200 of them and it allows you to focus more on getting the style and the look you want as opposed to being a wordsmith or a prompt engineer or whatever you want to call it and having to type out the exact prompt to get the look you're going for i'm going to show you all of this and more Let's go. All right, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to cgdream.ai. I will put a link in the description below. You should see a page that looks like this or very similar to this. And then up here at the right side, you'll see I have the option to log in or I could sign up. So I'll just click on log in here. Now I already have an account, so I'm going to sign in with Google. But if you don't have an account, you can sign in with Google, Discord, Facebook, or directly with CG Trader. I'm going to click on sign in with Google. And here we go. I'm just going to log in here and then presto. This is the first screen. Now, let me show you how to do text to image. All right. So the text to image functionality in CG Dream is easy to use and super high quality. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. If I go up here to the top and I hover over this T, which is for text prompt, when I click on that, it filters all the images that were created with just text, with no uploads, no 3D models. This is just text. And if we go through it here real slowly, you'll see that these are extremely high quality. Look at this warrior here. This is fantastic. That is literally photorealistic. It's unbelievable. I'll go back. I can show you this one here, this sort of uh, 3D model here, cute chibi girl smiling. That is fantastic. That looks something out of some sort of Pixar movie. I mean, it's just really, really high quality stuff. I created this one here. This is the Mariana Trench anthropomorphic man i made that one it is fantastic <laughs> don't mind me saying that and this samurai uh, what is this a samurai gerbil samurai hamster all right so you can see here this is really high quality stuff luckily it's easy to create so let's do that the first step here is down here at the bottom you're going to see upload which we'll get to later filters and then there's just a text bar here you can literally just type in what you want for this one i'm going to create a roman soldier and in cg dream you don't have to type in a 50 word prompt like you do in so many other AI generators. You can do this nice and simple like I'm gonna do here and we're gonna apply filters to get the look that we're going for. So I'm just gonna type in Roman soldier and then I'm gonna click on filters. And when I do that, it automatically bubbles up some of the filters that it thinks I would be interested in. And if we look at it here, this one here, Roman empire, like that is the perfect filter and it's literally right at the top. So I'm gonna click on that one I'm going to add it and you'll see here that it's been added on the left side. We can adjust the relative strength of these uh, filters in a few seconds here, but let's just go ahead and pick a few that work good for this one here. So I like Roman, uh, Roman Empire. I kind of want a fantasy art style. I like battle fantasy. I think of a Roman soldier going into battle fantasy art because I like that type of style. And as I go through here, I mean, let's just take a look here. There's so many different things we can add in here. Ancient runes, Vikings embroidery style historical character historical okay so maybe like a historical character i like that idea let's add that one in here and again they're stacking up here on the left side and i mean there are so many to choose from you can select a type of like a material so if i want my soldier to be made out of marble or maybe i want my soldier to be out of, made out of stone or i want it to be dressed up like a cute little bunny <laughs> okay maybe that's a bit too far okay well whatever i tried um, but there's so many different things here. And if you want to do some sort of fusion where you bring in something like steampunk, you can go ahead and do that. But right now we've got four filters applied, so we can go with that for now. But again, please feel free to go through all of them here. There are so many filters that are great that you will... Oh, horror Surrealism is a fantastic filter, by the way. So many good ones. But anyway, we've got our styles here. We've got our filters selected. So I'm going to close this here. I'm going to go to the left side here. And then when I hover... You'll see here that we can go ahead and adjust the strength of the filter. So the first one here is Roman Empire. Now this one is obvious to me. So I'm going to pull that one all the way up to like 0.85. 
Keep in mind, you can, of course, adjust these. We're going to generate them. We're going to see what we get. If we don't like it or if we like it, but we want to make some tweaks to it, just go ahead and regenerate and just adjust the uh, filters as you see fit. Fantasy art, I'm going to leave it as is. Battle fantasy, yes, I think of a Roman soldier. I think of a battle, so I'm going to pull that one up here. And then historical character, I'm going to leave that one as is for now. And then on the right side, before I click generate, there's a couple things I want to show you. We can adjust the size. It defaults right now to 1-1. One, one. But if you're making a YouTube video in the horizontal fashion, you can go ahead and create 16-9 if you want. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. This next part is important. Number of variations. I believe it defaults to 1. But if you want to run 4 at a time, keep in mind that you get like 40 free generations per day. So... You know, rather than going one at a time, I'm going to go four at a time. It takes a few extra seconds, but it's well worth it for me, in my opinion. So there you go. And, of course, you can adjust a few of these other things, like prompt guidance. This one doesn't matter too much for me because I've got a very simple prompt. But if you have a complicated prompt, like a lot of you out there are really good at writing, you know, long, detailed prompts, they work just as good here as they work anywhere. Just, you know, add the filters on top of that, and you'll get an even... Maybe a potentially better look. I'm not sure. But uh, I'm a simple guy. I like to create my simple prompt. So there we go. So go ahead and adjust that as you see fit. And then the rest here, I'm just going to leave as is. Now, we have two options down here. We have generate. And this is the one I usually do. But we also have something called dream up. And that's this little button here at the right here. And when I read it, it says let AI enhance image generation and handle the details. So basically, you're letting the AI take over and come up with some ideas, give you, you know, you know, a couple of unique styles, something you may not have thought about. And I really like this because you can get a lot of variations using this button. So, you know, you'll get surprise variations that you would have never thought about. Like I got one the other day of like an ice castle with like a, uh, like some sort of scary skull in the back. And I was like, what the heck? But it's because I used dream up. So keep in mind, you can use that as well. But for this demonstration, we're going to go with generate. I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to come back when it's done, show you what we got. All right, welcome back. So let's take a look at what we got here. So here are the first four generations. And I can tell you right now, they are fantastic, especially this bottom right one and the bottom left one. But I really like the bottom right one because he's got a really cool three-quarter pose in there. And you'll see some of the soldiers in the background. They've got a little bit of a blur to them, giving it that depth of field look. Fantastic stuff. Let's click on it and open it up. And there you go. Like this is, this looks exactly like a Roman soldier in my book. So the filters that we applied here have done a fantastic job. Remember, there's lots more that you can try, but these four in that combination, you get this. This is amazing. However, we can do a little better here. And what I'm going to show you now is this X2 button at the bottom here. This is the image resolution button. You can double the resolution of the image so you can upscale it times two. But more importantly, it adds in additional details. So as good as the images are, it's going to get even better once we click this button. So I'm going to go ahead and give it the X2 button or give it the upscale detail button. Click on that. It's going to requeue this. And when it's done, I'm going to show you this and we'll compare it to the previous version. And then we're going to get into the image to image stuff. All right, welcome back. So here is an example of the upscaling. And I can already tell you it did a fantastic job. Let's zoom in here and just look at the detail here. I'll just sort of Move the image around. This is amazing. Now, to compare it against the original, all you need to do is click on that X2 button here. Here's the original. Fantastic stuff, but it lacks the grainy detail that the upscaled and the higher detailed image has. So again, you could always just do a quick comparison. When I click on X2 here, look at that. Look at the armor here. You can see the details in the armor. It li literally looks like hammered metal the cloth here you can see when i zoom way way in you can see the graininess of the cloth the buttons this is just absolutely fantastic and let's not even forget you know the face here the face is absolutely amazing again on off you can definitely see the difference that's all you need to do to upscale and take your images to the next level okay let's get into the next bit all right so image to image in cg dream is also very easy to use and it gives you very high quality images let's take a look here i'm going to go to the top here i'm going to click on this show images generated from an image icon when i do that these are just some of the examples the high quality examples i should add 
of images that were created using a reference image. If we look at this one here, I mean, just zooming in, this looks extremely realistic, unbelievable. Let's go down a little bit here. And I mean, this one here is, is, is insane. This is Ragnar, I mean, from the show Vikings. That is absolutely amazing. And you can also see when I clicked on it here, what the different filters are that were applied. Vikings, Barbarian, Medieval Age, all makes perfect sense. And there's so many more different looks here that you can go through and take a look at. But in order for us to do it, let's just go up here to the top. What you got to do is you want to go to the left side here and then you'll see upload. And I'm going to click on upload. And when I do that, I get the option to upload either a 3D file, which is for 3D models and 3D objects, which I'll show you in a few short seconds, or upload an image. And that's the one I'm going to go with for now. So I'm going to go into my finder and then I'm going to go into my CG dream. Uh, folder and then here we go I've got this image of this attractive lady doing you know just looking at a globe so I'll just upload it here it'll just take a few seconds and here we go this is what we got now I like this image a lot because you know you can already see that this has a little bit of a witchy Wiccan type look to it but again we're going to use CG dream to take this image and take it to the next level so there we go we've uploaded it now we're going to go ahead and flip into the filters let's click on filters over here on the left side we have no filters applied, but you'll see here that I have the one word prompt of which. That's it. Now, if you have a detailed prompt that you want to add in here, you know, which with a black cat and a pink nose or whatever you're looking for, go ahead and do that. But I want to show you the power of the filters here. So just using a simple prompt like this. So again, when we typed in the word which here, you'll see here that we have some recommended filters. So it kind of knows where we're going with this. So Again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this filter here, which filter. That makes a lot of sense. So we're going to add that one. I'm going to add the wizard filter because I kind of like the wizardy cap type look. I'm going to add a dark magic um, filter. This one is extremely important and extremely good, I should add. And then, you know what? Let's just go ahead and look through a few other ones here. We've got women fantasy. And I don't think we need that one here, but maybe we want... Fairy tales, yes, that's a great one. We're going to add fairy tales in because she's a fairy tale witch. And then here, what do we got here? Fumes, do we want fumes in her hair? We do, yes, we do. We're going to add in fumes. And as I add them all in here, you can see here that they're stacking up on the left side, just like we did with text to image. Now, when I go through this list here, there are so many different ones. Fluid illustration looks fantastic. Uh, what do we got here? Portrait effects, we've got horror surrealism holy smoke punk collage we used that one previously so many different ones of course try them all out i mean you can mix and match them as you see fit but again i've got the ones i think i want for this so we're going to go ahead and click out and then we're going to click on one of the filters and then look at this we can now again adjust the strength so for this one for the witch well we're creating a witch so let's take that one all the way up to 1.0 She's not a wizard, so we're going to pull that one down a little bit, but we like the kind of look of it, and I like the pointy cap type style, so I'm going to keep that in here. Dark Magic. This one I'm going to jack up all the way to 0.9 because I know it's important. Fairy Tales so I'm going to leave as is. Fumes should give us a nice little couple of fumes kind of going around her hair, kind of that ethereal ghost type look. And again, these are just my starting weights. We can adjust these, you know, in the future variations when we click on Prompt. Uh, or click on generate part of me and then again up at the top right this time you know we're going to go ahead with four variations and you know we'll just keep it at four variations i'm going to go ahead and leave the prompt guidance as is if we wanted to make any changes up here we could and then i'm just going to go ahead and click on generate check this out when it's done i'm going to come back and i'm going to show you what we got all right welcome back and here's what we got and i can already tell that i like at least two of these quite a bit i like the top right one and I like the top left one, even though she's got a little bit of a different facial structure. So here's what we're going to do. Let's click on the top right one to start off here. We're going to take a look at this one here. And bam, she looks like a witch to me. I mean, let's look at the original image here. This is the original. We've got this nice looking lady. She's got this Wiccan kind of dreadlocky hair holding the globe. She's got some neat tattoos and things like that. But she doesn't look like a witch yet. When we click over, now she looks like a witch. And let's zoom in here. And you'll see here that, you know, she's got sharp fingers here. So it's kind of like witch-like hands. Uh, she's got a dress on now. She's not got her tattoos showing. She's got like a witch's dress on. It's actually like a witch-slash-wizardy type robe. She's got a necklace on that has some sort of 
dark something or other in there. And, you know, she's got some highlights in her hair. They're no longer dreadlocked. They're more of the traditional fairy tale style. And again, remember, this is just, you know, this is good, but we can take it to the next level. I'm going to click on X2, and this is going to go ahead and upscale and add in a few more details. I'm going to come back when this is done, and I'll show you very quickly what we got. And All right, so here's what we get when we upscale and we add in the details with the X2 button. And as I zoom in here, you can already see there's a little bit of a difference here. Like, for example, her eyes have a little bit more of an ethereal look to them, like they're like she's a witch, <laughs> like she's there, but she's not really there. But if we toggle between the X2 here, here's the original shot here. It looks pretty good, but the details aren't there. There's a little bit of blur in around some of the things like her necklace and her bodice here with her um, spider look or her spider pattern on there. When I click on X2, it all becomes pretty clear. Like, for example, as I zoom in here, this looks to me like a skeleton key on her necklace. And this is very clearly a spider design or a spider pattern pattern on her shirt. And you can see the crisscross sewing here on her arm sleeves. And things like that are very nice sharp fingernails, which makes a lot of sense because she's a witch. So you can really see it. And again, if I click on the button here, you know, this is the first version. This is the detailed version. It's color corrected. So the light is on her skin and it has a more glow and a more of a natural orangish skin tone as opposed to the uh you know just more of the diffuse blurred version in this uh, in the previous one so there you go guys this is how you upscale this is how you do image to image all right and before i take you over to the 3d object and the 3d model side of things there is one more thing i do want to show you here very quickly and that is the resemblance filter if we go down here to the bottom left here you'll see here as i hover here it says resemblance we can go ahead and use this in the image to image side of things. Let me show you an example. For example, here is an image of my dog, Kingston, and I love him and he's beautiful and he's a French English bulldog mix. Now, I want to create cartoon characters that look very similar to him and they've got that Pixar look to them. So here we go. You'll see here, for example, this one here, you got a little tougher showing out here. And if you look at this image, if I click on it here, Look at the image. It's got some of that Pixar look to it. But look at the white stripe down the middle of his of his uh, head here, right here. Look at Now look at Kingston, the white stripe right down here. So we've managed to keep the resemblance. We've kept the colors. We've kept everything except he's got that cute little Pixar side of things. So how did I do this? Well, let's get into that here. So let's start from scratch. So I'm going to delete all of these things here. And we're going to go right back to the beginning. I'm just going to click on CG Dream here. And then, oh, let's get rid of the filters again. Sorry about that. There they go. I got rid of them. Now, the first step here is bottom left. Click on upload like we do. I'm going to grab an image of, in this case, my dog Kingston. And there it is. Going to drag and drop that right over upload image file. Great. It only takes a few seconds and it should be done. Now, look at this here. At the bottom left here, there's this little button here that says resemblance. Now, when I hover over the information button here or the icon, it says Upload a reference image to blend with your prompt output. Adjust the slider. Low values on the left side, basically, will alter the original image more, while higher values will keep it very similar to your image. So you can adjust this as you see fit. I want to go ahead and alter it a fair bit because I really want to bring some of that Pixar look into the uh, Bulldog here. So um, I've gone ahead and typed in a prompt. It says Pixar style French Bulldog. Now, normally you could type in a more elaborate prompt if you want to. But again, we're going to use the power of the filter system here. So I'm going to click on filters next. And again, with that resemblance set to 0.3, we're going to go ahead now and pick some filters that give it the nice Pixar look. So in this case, I think 3D cartoon animals works very, very good. I like the storybook look. I like cartoon characters. And then I'll scroll down a couple here and I'm going to add in this one here, magical creatures. Now you can always, you know, adjust these filters as you see fit. These are the four that I find work best for this type of image. And I do want to caution you because once you start, you know, creating <laughs> images with your pet, oh my God, you'll start out making a photorealistic image and then you're going to have your pet in a rocket ship and your pet's going to be on the moon and he's going to be on a trampoline on a beach wearing a Sherlock. I mean, it just, it never ends. It is so much fun, <laughs> but it's risky because you'll lose many, many hours making your pet look beautiful. But here we go. So we're going to go ahead and Pixar style the bulldog here, my bulldog Kingston. 
Now for this one, I'm going to increase the 3D cartoon animal style to 0.85 because I believe this one is the strongest uh, one that in terms of creating it to look like Pixar style. I'm going to pull the storybook down a little bit here. I'm going to cartoon creature up to 0.8 and I'm also going to magical creature up to 0.75. Now these are just uh, results. These are just, you know, numbers that I have found worked in the past. But again, you can always adjust them as you see fit. I'm going to go ahead with that here and again making sure that resemblance is set to where you want it. I've got it at 0 0.3. I'm going to go ahead and click on generate. I'll come back when it's done. I'm going to show you my bulldog when he looks like a Pixar character. And then we're going to go over to 3D objects and models. All right, welcome back. So let's see what we got here. So this is fantastic. I know what my doggy looks like and I can already tell you at the bottom left one here. I love this one. If I click on it, that has the nice white stripe in the middle there. It's got that cute little Pixar kind of, I don't know what it's like, clay type look to it. So it, it's nice and stylized. This is fantastic. This just makes my heart happy. So I would go ahead and use this one, for example. And also keep in mind that if I wanted to go and look through some of the other ones, I've got more down here, like this one here. I like this one. If I click on this one here, I like this one because it's got his little tougher showing. So another one that I would go ahead and use potentially. And because I like it so much, I would click on the X2 so that I would go ahead and, you know, upscale it and bring in some more details. And you can see here that I've been trying for a while now. So I've got all sorts of different looks of my bulldog, including his original images. So, yeah, this is just something that once you start doing this, you just really can't stop. But uh, there you go, guys. So that's how you do image to image with the resemblance functionality. Now let's get on to the 3D objects and 3D model side of things. All right, last but definitely not least, in fact, this is the best thing about CG Dream in my opinion, and something I've not seen anywhere else in any other AI image generator is 3D objects or 3D models used for AI image generation. Let me show you here. If I click up here in the top menu and click on 3D models, Look at this. You'll see all of these models you can use. So, I mean, there are, I don't even know, hundreds, maybe even thousands of them. You can scroll through them and take a look and see if something catches your eye. Or alternatively, there's two things you can do. One, you could just type in what you're looking for. I'll type in dog and hit enter, and I'm sure they're going to have all. Yeah, there we go. Look at all these different images. Oh, there we go. We've got the big Jungus dog there. <laughs> all these different dog 3D models. 3D objects that you can choose from. I really like uh, this one here. This guy looks pretty cool. Let's click on this dog and now watch this. Not only can you use this 3D object, you can rotate it and get the exact angle and look you're going for. So if I want this cool cucumber to be maybe looking a little bit to the side with a little bit of a rakish grin like that, bam, I can do that. Watch this now. I can go ahead and type in dog and again, we're going to use the filter. So we've got the low poly fox here. But again, make sure you note the uh, direction and the uh, pose of this puppy dog here. Actually, let's do something like that. Let's go. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on filters. And then it's going to go ahead and use its smart filtering system to recommend some. And then look at this. we got one called dressed animals. Okay, I like that already. We're going to dress this animal up. Maybe we're going to do some 3D Redmond. Okay, I like this one here. And okay, I mean, again, I'm having some fun here. Do I want storybook? Do I want a knitted wool? Do I want material stone? Do I want a stone doggy? I do. Okay, we'll go with those three. Again, we can adjust them as we see fit here. So for the filters, dressed animals, yeah, let's jack that up here. 3D, let's leave it as is. And then for a stone look, yeah, let's go a little bit higher here. Again, we're using the simplest of all prompts because CG Dream doesn't really focus on fancy dancy you know, huge prompts that you have to type in just one or two words if you want. That being said, if you do have a long prompt that you want to use, it will work. Don't get me wrong. It's not against that. It's just, it just makes it easier this way. So there we go. We've gone ahead. We've added some filters in. We've got our 3D object. I'll click on generate. It's going to do its thing. Now, while it generates, I want to show you one other thing here. I'm going to go back here to 3D models and then under the bottom left here, you'll see upload. If you have your own model like I do here, I'm going to go into Finder and I'm just going to go ahead and grab this dog. No, maybe I don't want the dog. Maybe I want this one that says Sting Sword. So I've got a low poly sword here. I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop in this FBX file. 
Now, this is just a uh, free sword that I found online. It's very, very basic. But again, I can upload my own 3D objects, my own 3D models. I can move it around, kind of get the look I'm going for, something like that maybe. And then I can go ahead and start creating off this. So just keep that in mind. So anyways, I'm going to come back when our other generations are done, show you what we got, and then we're going to wrap it all up. All right, welcome back. And look at this. This is fantastic. It not only got the exact pose and the exact style that I wanted. Look at this. If I click on, well, these are all awesome, but let's click on this one here. I'll click in. Look at that. It's got the low poly. But if we look at the filters, we've got a dressed animal and we've got some 3D action. That looks pretty 3D to me. And then we've got some material, some stone material. And if you know, you look at this here, it looks pretty damn good. So this is just one example and it is fantastic. There are some other things we can do here. You'll see the X2 button. This basically not only increases the resolution of the image, but it also increases the detail. So the reason why you want to use this is because if you find an image that you really like, like this one, just X to it and it's going to go ahead and queue it up and it's going to add in details and it's going to add in higher resolution. Let's, I'll come back when it's done to show you what we got. You'll love it. All right, welcome back here. So you can see here that this has gone ahead and upscaled and added in all sorts of details this is a fantastic image this is super cool look at his ears they look like they're made out of like wood or stone in this case but uh yeah they've got that depth they've got shadows i mean this is just fantastic stuff so there you go this is just some examples of what you can do with cg dream the last thing i want to show you here at the bottom right here is their dream up functionality if you like to use short prompts like I do, because I'm not a prompt engineer by any stretch of the imagination, I'll just type in dog, and then sometimes I just use dream up, and it basically lets the AI enhance and make suggestions for you. So it's kind of like a random role. Let the computer, or let the AI figure out, you know, some ideas and run them by you. Let it cook, do its thing, see what you get. But there you go. This is CG Dream. This is the functionality inside it. It's fantastic. You get all those free images. Give it a crack. Thanks for watching.